Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah, so today I'll be talking about uh, the phenomena of increased uh, pain reported by patients after a second eye surgery in comparison to their first surgery. Um, and, and then wrap up with uh, introducing a new clinical study that will be taking place here at the Moran uh, next month um, to uh, provide more insight into this phenomena. And so second, this increased pain during second eye surgery has really only uh, been uh, described or noticed uh, since topical anesthesia has replaced uh, nerve blocks. And, and while it's improved a lot of patient outcomes, uh, patients also reporting this increased awareness of, of their environment and specifically more pain during their second eye. So I'll be reviewing some of the literature. Um, this is a rel relatively new topic, so it is, um, there's only about four papers on that, only looking at the ones that uh, investigated, looking at uh, consecutive eyes um, in, in a single patient. There's other studies that look at only the second eye or the first type one patient, try to compare the second eye to the second patient, but they're unable to uh, control for these interpatient differences. So. The first study was just a couple years ago, and they wanted to look at the whole patient experience um, that's going on um, during the perioperative period. And one of these uh, uh, factors they're looking at was anxiety, um, and they were indeed able to show that patients do have an increased level of uh, anxiety during uh, their first um, eye surgery, and, and this anxiety is uh, greatly decreased during their second surgery. Um, they also wanted to measure pain, so we're looking at here. Um, and what the way they did this is they asked patients to remember the pain that they experienced during the intraoperative period in order to get a better idea of what they were experiencing. And they did also find that indeed patients do have an increased level of pain um, during their second eye surgery. Um, however, when they asked them to, re, um, to remember this pain one day later, this effect disappeared. So bringing the question, okay, how reliable is a patient's uh, recollec recollection of their pain um, during surgery? Um, and so further studies try to build upon this. They too looked at the uh, pain that patients remember after their surgery. They were able to replicate this, um, showing indeed there is an increased pain. Um, however, they try to bring some clinical relevance to this. So, okay, great, they're going through pain, but uh, how is this relevant for us? And so they asked the surgeons to rate the, the cooperation of the patients during surgery. And, and they found that th there's an inverse relationship here where the, the more pain a patient experienced, the less cooperative they were. So they started trying to close their eyes, they weren't able to fixate, um, weren't as able to receive direction. So now this is not just a patient comfort issue, it's also safety issue, where um, if, the, if they're moving around during surgery, this can cause uh, some unintended uh, um, errors during surgery. So uh, further studies again, this is a, uh, they try to replicate this. And this study was not able to repeat these findings. Nothing significant was found um, with the pain perception, but they did note another interesting phenomena here is that when patients were asked to score their pain on zero to 10 scale, they, and they asked them to do that first, and then they asked them to, okay, which one was more painful, the first, the second, or neither? 50% um, of patients said that their second eye was more painful indeed. However, of those, 40% um, actually rated their second eye less painful on the zero to 10 scale. So again, bring into question, okay, how reliable is patient recollection of pain and, and how are we able to improve these outcomes when we're not really able to measure this? So here's the last one we'll quickly jump through is they, they want to look further into, okay, how can we trust these patients' pain? So again, ask them to recall their pain, but they took a different approach. They said, okay, now tell us two to three weeks later how much pain do you, did you have? And a significant decrease in the amount of pain that they're able to recall um, during um, two to three weeks later. And the same effect was seen during the second eye as well. And so the idea here is uh, patients during their second eye surgery, when they're asked to, you know, how painful is their eye, they remember a lot uh, less pain from the first surgery. So for example, if, if they scored a one on the pain scale, during their first surgery, you know, during their second eye, they're now, s they remember it as a, a 0.5. And so whatever pain that they experience now, they're like, oh, that was twice as um, painful, they're gonna give you another score of one. Um, and so it makes it difficult to really, really quantify this. Um, they see it as a lot more painful, but the scoring system um, does not bring out any significance. So that's the totality of, of the literature on 
this, uh, this phenomena that's reported. And it absolutely. Yes. yes. They're all standardized to receive the same amount, and and. Um, most of these studies, yeah, most of these, yeah, most of these studies did a good job of reporting that afterwards, and they didn't find any significant difference in the amount given, and and one of these studies actually didn't didn't give any versed at all, and and that way they were able to eliminate um, that confounder as well, and they were able to get the same result. Um, just to summarize what we know about second eyes um, surgery is it's really right now this is the the theory is that there's patient expectations going into surgery they expect a lot more pain on the first one when they don't have any pain it, it's uh, seen as a lot less significant and then they expect the same outcome on the second surgery and any amount of pain is seen to be um, uh, greater and this is again magnified with anxiety and memory of the patient and so why does this matter? Um, Dr. Lee <laughs> has done a, a great job uh, here at the University Health System to, um, to really pr uh, promote this idea of value-driven uh, outcomes. And we all know very well that you know, the equation of value, we're here to uh, bring value to our patients. And, and what we need to do is be able to first measure what's going on intraoperatively if we're, if we're planning to uh, increase the quality and the service of, of uh, these surgeries that we give these patients. So up to now, we haven't really been able to measure it. And so the study we'll be proposing for starting here, um, we'll be measuring intraoperative pain with a uh, new device we've been partnered with the uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering. Um, and Dr. Roundy has developed this device. I'll show a picture here in a minute about uh, where patients are able to report pain and discomfort during the intraoperative period. Um, we'll also be looking at anxiety and um, before the surgery, but then also the anticipation. Okay, what are patients ex uh, expecting before surgery happens? Um, when I was interviewing patients uh, to try to design this study, um, some, some of them wouldn't even report that they only slept two to three hours the night before because of uh, this increased anxiety of not knowing you know, what, what's going to happen. And so this is an area of where we can try to improve some outcomes to... Um, standardize what patients can expect when they come. We'll also be um, looking at patient recall to find some uh, correlation to see if this device is able to provide the, the intraoperative data that we're looking for. And then a bigger picture analysis would be like, okay, overall satisfaction, okay, maybe they're experiencing greater pain, but does this matter two or three weeks later? Maybe it's just a comment they make right after surgery, but their overall satisfaction of uh, the care they're receiving is remains the same. So we'll be looking at that as well. So this is a picture of the device. This is uh, designed by Dr. Roundy and Dr. Sakata. And what it is, a, it's a patient communication device. Patients are able to hold it during the surgery and they're able to engage this uh, button at the top of the device here if they're in any discomfort or distress during surgery and this would be recorded. Um, there's also a couple other factors here that we'll be uh, measuring, um, including like uh, passive squeeze. So sometimes when patients um, have increased anxiety, they tend to clench their fists. And this will give us a, a better idea of the, the, the amount of passive force uh, given during surgery. Um, and also acceleration of their hand if they tend to jerk or squeeze. Um, just give, get a little more data of what's going on intraoperatively so we can actually improve um, what's uh, the outcomes. So. Yeah, so we'll be starting this next month. We're excited to see uh, um, how this will translate to uh, improve patient care. And if anybody's interested in becoming involved in a uh, quality improvement project, then uh, you know, feel free to contact me or uh, Dr. Chaya, and um, we'll let you know more about it. Any questions? <laughs> yes, sir.
Mm Absolutely, yeah. The patients will only be included if they have uh, the same surgeon for both eyes. Um, that's what we're looking at. Uh, Dr. Mbadi? Uh, one of the studies did, yes. They looked at uh, heart rate, uh, mean arterial pressure, um, res uh, respiratory rate. They looked at those uh, basic vital signs. Um, and they did show us a, a small correlation with uh, anxiety with that. Um, the, the results were conflicting. There, w w there wasn't um, anything really significant found from them. Uh, the, I forgot the variables, but they, it wasn't consistent across what they were looking for, and the effect wasn't that great. Um, but blood pressure was the one that they saw was um, as anxiety was higher um, preoperatively, um, so it was blood pressure, and postoperatively, blood pressure was lower um, after the surgery was over. Um, they didn't really find an effect between the first and second eye, just pre and postoperatively. Um, sorry. That's a great question. Um, music. That, that is something we should control for. I, I haven't thought about that one. It's a, I'll have to reflect on it, but yeah, it could. It's an interesting concept. There, there's been uh, studies done about music and athletic endurance. 
I think that'd be have to be a, a separate study for different types of music and how that affects. Um, but yeah, that's a very good point. That's a potential confounder. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think one solution. I think piano has a lot of those problems. You can play in crazy music. I think it was kind of a negative for some time. It was too loud. Mm -hmm. Bob Hoffman and Cindy Hoff every time Cindy Hoff went over. Anyway, the music can be the music of positive. Right, right, right. No, no. Same thing on Jerry Chaplin. There, there, there actually was a study that on what kind of There, there has been studies on that, um, the w though th it's been difficult to um, conduct them because typically the surgery is done on the one with the uh, uh, lo best corrected, uh, um, uh, lowest best cor corrected vision. So it's, it's been difficult to uh, do a study that's uh, been um, randomized. But the, the w the what has been shown is that um, there is no difference between the two um, on follow-up studies. But earlier on, there were some studies that did suggest that. Um, these ones, er everything that they showed, showed there was no significant difference between the two. Um, so I guess the jury's still out. There's um, some people on both sides of that. That might be a tough one to look at. Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea that they're more aware of their environment. They're able to anticipate what the surgeon's going to do next. So they're they're waiting for that um, incision, um, and 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 maybe any type of pressure they feel that's oh, um, they're more aware to it. <laughs> we have a question back there. And that's uh, a good point. The, the only studies that looked into simultaneous were for LASIK. And they, um, in, in those surgeries, bilateral, simultaneous, they do have this phenomena of increased perception of pain intraoperatively. Um, and there's one study, only one study that actually did that. And they did show that there was that same um, um, effect. Um, and then in far, as far as cataract surgery, um, most it's difficult because most surgeons uh, want to wait a couple days before they're doing the second one just to see the outcomes of the first. So. Um, it's, it's a little more difficult to get a cohort of simultaneous um, cataract surgeries. That's a great question. And yeah, so this will be the first study uh, of its time uh, looking at uh, um, this pain uh, during cataract surgery. Um, and so in a way, this is also the, uh, would be a validation of the device as well. And that's why we're also measuring uh, the, right now what the gold standard is, is this patient recall. And, and, and seeing how it compares to that. And, and so this is uh, more of a, uh, the first study of its kind to look at this uh, phenomena. And so um, 
we'll, we'll find out more once it's complete about that. But there are other studies that do show that patients are willing to engage with devices intraoperatively to report um, their experience to surgeons. And, um, so there's an awful problem. When you start inducing anxiety, <laughs> And that's what it has been suggested. It, it, this, the authors all conclude saying, tell your patients they're going to have more pain on the second eye. So get that anxiety up so they don't experience it. <laughs> all right, thank you, everyone. Great. Thank, thank you to our medical students.